French Phenom joins us again on the Champions League. Well, if you've never seen Chris off play before, you get used to all of his mannerisms, which are very unique to him. Love watching him play. I mean, that break is pretty perfect. I mean, he's incredibly unlucky not to get a ball. Yeah, meticulous with the way he sets himself up. Look at the spot there. That will be that like that every single break. Yeah, and there's a few who use that almost topspin style break. Only the, a touch of topspin. You generally want a pretty flat cue ball going into the pack to generate that power. But what it does do is it sits that cue ball right in the middle of the table. In terms of the connection, I think Christoph would have maybe liked a little, more, a little bit more power through the pack if he's been super picky. But he couldn't really have asked for too much more. Yeah, that certainly wasn't his full full power break. It was more no. controlled than, than full power, but it does mean the first chances to the young Welshman, and it's a pretty good one here. And that is a lovely cannon as well. He didn't just fire into that to open it up. That was exactly the cannon he wanted. Very nice. Yeah, opens up the eight ball beautifully. Really tidy that from Luke Sanchez. Still got plenty of time on his side as the Welshman, and he a world junior champion not that long ago. And uh, a player that you yourself have had experience of playing, Si. He's actually been around maybe a little bit longer than we're maybe making it sound like, but he's, he's been playing at top level for a, for a very long time. Yeah, and, and coming, and that's a disappointing shot for him. I think he's put himself in trouble here. May have to dig himself out with a big shot but yeah no back you know he edged himself from a junior world champion to a new professional to a, a player that was knocking on the door of winning titles to a top 10 player back when there was a, a lot of players on that tour when he was having that success and certainly a player to keep an eye on I think there was an element of safety to that shot as well I'm just thinking about where he's left the cue ball here Wanted to make the double, make absolutely no mistake. Also didn't want to make anything too easy for Christoph. Yeah, it was almost not on, wasn't it? The, the red was almost in the way of that. So The only ball he couldn't account for, of course, was the red that he eventually collided into, which is the only one that's really on comfortably. I think Luke's taken the, the calculation that those two balls that Christoph's just tried to cannon into were the only two that Christoph was going to struggle to deal with, but he went straight after them. And in the end, a little bit unlucky not to get a better contact. Just flicked the ball on the way down rather than going into them clean. It means there's still big problems for him and he may just pull back here. He may not keep going. He may not be able to keep going, to be honest. Yeah, and he's a big part if he's going to be able to do so. Oh, he can see this one. And he can see the centre of the cue ball to get to it as well, which is important. Disaster really for Christoph Lambert. Missed the pot by a little way, but also has made that red quite safe. And it is always, always, always worth pointing out. You're never quite at home, you're never quite settled until that first frame is next to your name on the scoreboard. And it is a little bit nervy out there. I did not expect that miss from Luke, I have to say. I, I did see the, the red went awkward, but I didn't think that was going to make any difference because I thought Luke was just going to calmly drop him in because all he had to do was drop that in pocket weight and they were all there for him. So two disappointing visits to the table already for Luke Sanchez here. He looked shocked when he missed that. Oh, I'm shocked he's missed that one. Christoph, that is. Yeah, definitely a bit of edginess out there. No doubt about that. Well, this time, Luke, this time he should get them. There is nothing in the way. I guess this first shot could uh, he could run a little bit awkward, but I mean, really isn't anywhere to finish awkward. Oh, yeah, it's finished awkward unless that's straight. I'm going to nominate there. <laughs> yeah, he's OK. This, this is a fairly comfortable plant, so he's, he's not too bad here. Yeah, he's about as bad as he possibly could have been, but it's still OK. 
Yeah, definitely an edgy first frame, this one, for sure. Just got to watch where the yellowy sitting goes. Yeah, that's OK. I was a little worried it might go and sit close to the other one and they sort of almost block each other, but that hasn't happened. Sanji's goes 1-0 in front, and that is the only thing he will ever want to remember from that frame of pull. Yeah, not very often at professional level you get three chances in a frame. Here is the Newport boy, former World Youth Champion, as we've mentioned, and a European team champion as well with Wales. Ultimate pull wildcard for this season. And as I mentioned, he is essentially starting at the bottom again. Still relatively fresh into the season. We had a couple of events before this Champions League. It will certainly be interesting to see how the wild cards get on. Luke's first break of the night. Hit that very well. Yeah, I'd have been absolutely amazed if that was dry, and it almost was. Caught these beautifully. Yeah, and a pretty decent chance off the back of it as well. Could go either way here. The two yellows are set as a plant in the middle, but the reds are also there for him as well. Personal preference, this one. He can just clip this one into the bottom right-hand corner. It's whether he can get good position off it. If he doesn't feel he can, then the yellows will be the way. Yellows might be the way anyway, to be honest with you. I think, yeah, the more you look at the yellows, the more they almost sort of naturally produce a bit of a pattern, but it will be reds. Yeah, just maybe the one yellow nearest to sort of two reds in the middle of the table. That may be just the slightly awkward one. The rest are all there. The red that's going to be under his body for the next shot's the, the awkward one on the table here for Luke. Doesn't have the, a perfect ball to get onto it. And normally I would say that one on the cushion is not the, the worst last ball. The problem is you're not going to be able to get right behind it, so you're going to be playing it with quite a bit of angle, which means getting onto the eight ball. may have to play a, play a shot there rather than just sort of dropping it in because the eight ball doesn't go into either centre pocket. That's not ideal. It looks like he's just off straight the wrong way on the one to the top of the table. And he wants to get back to almost where he is now. So maybe taking these against his original order. I think the red at the top of the table, though, ultimately is, is a bit of a kind of last ball. Yeah, I think, though, his plan was... Because if he could have got position like he just did to this one, this is as good as it gets on, onto the red, so in terms of getting onto the eight ball. So just getting a little bit sort of back to front on the order has forced the miss. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this. Because if, imagine if he'd got there as last ball, then all he has to do is sort of just stun it back to the cue ball to the middle of the table rather than trying to get on the one at the top to then get back on the eight ball. Just means the cue ball's travelling and doing more work. I still didn't expect him to miss it. And there we see, for those who aren't familiar, the Christophe Lambert shake. looks like he's never ever going to pot a ball if you're just watching him live and it actually comes across a little bit less pronounced on 
on your screens, I can tell you. You watch it live, you just think, Crystal's never going to make a ball. How can you? But it's it's something he's always played with. It's just a bit of a quirk. And, yeah, it's something I've almost become very used to, but I'm always wary to point it out when we see Christoph again on our screens. For those who've not seen him before, he's absolutely chilling like that. It's the way he plays. To be fair, we, we've seen that with, with Mark Salby quite a bit on the snooker table, and he's, yeah. done, he's done okay with it, so it's not a, it's not a bad thing. This was the sort of visit that Christoph really wanted, just to settle him down, because he made a couple of mistakes at his first couple of visits to the table. Missing long pots is a feel you feel like a bit churlish almost calling the mistakes, but he'll he'll class them as that for sure. And it will feel nice for iRobot to be on the boards. European champion all the way back in 1999. He's been doing this for a very long time at a very high level. Twice a world doubles champion. And for nearly two decades, the French number one. This match has a very similar feel to the first one with arguably the top seed losing the opening frame and then let off in frame two. Yeah, a few parallels, no mistake. Look at that spot on the cue ball, exactly the same as the first one. Yeah, it's almost like the... Uh, it's another dry break, and he definitely gave that one more. I'm amazed that this is dry, because, as I say, you, in terms of where he's impacting the pack, I mean, the cue ball's perfect. A bit more power into it, and still no dice. That is tough. It's not the simplest of finishes, though. Yeah, first couple of shots on the reds here. Reds at the bottom are fine. It's just the first couple of shots. If he can just get back out. Oh, he's not even going to try. I was about to say, if he could get back out somewhere where he was, then clip one in, come off the cushion and bump into the yellow, he would open everything up. But he's backing himself to make a very delicate pot here. He must have had less angle than I first thought on that first shot. I thought he could get it, punch it in and come two or three cushions, two or three inches off the cushion. And he probably couldn't have done that. So he accepted what he had. If he can get good position on the one just above the yellow, you saw him looking at it there, then he, he could use that to get onto the other one just below the yellow. But he's a decent way short. Need another eight inches of pace, maybe a little bit more on that one. Yeah, you just see where he's pointing his cue. He can get around to there, off this run right at the bottom of the table. Just around off two cushions, maybe off the one. I may have been doing him a disservice. His plan may have always been to get rid of the, both of these at the bottom, but just the way he played that made me think that he was tracking up for it, and I, I do think he was. Oh, he'll take that. Oh, that's. I am going to do Luke Sanji a bit, maybe a bit of a disservice, and suggest that I don't think that was exactly what he played for. I think there's no way. But it's a great result. Oh, he will take it all day. But he did play it at such a pace and on such a line that. I he was looking to make something happen, maybe. I think his target was the yellow, not the red. Right. Because if he can as the yellow, he's he's on the red to the right centre, or the red to the top left. Yeah, not got the biggest window to land on this eight ball, so just has to mind his work. Shouldn't be a problem. the line nicely. If anything, almost over, does it? Maybe slightly awkward queuing here. Yeah, it is. This needs taking out. Does so well. Uh, 
as Luke Sanchez goes 2-1 in front. First one off the break tonight, I think. There's been quite a few chances where the player is, has got deep and not managed to finish it off and lots of counter clearances, but that'll make Luke feel an awful lot better. Yeah, and it should. Christoph's hit two really nice breaks, he'll feel, and it won't feel good to have given Luke first opportunity in every frame. Very difficult to win if that's what you're doing. Luke hit a side jammer with his first break of the night, looking to repeat the trick. Five minutes left on the match clock. It's 15 second shot clock time after this break, which is hit hard again. But it's dry. Both colour sets here are really good. Hard to see where he's going to go wrong. Everything clean, everything in the open. Almost connecting a training exercise kind of layout, really. Almost ball in hand perfect on the first ball. Eight ball does go past the yellow to the bottom right hand corner. So this is just mind your work stuff here for Christoph to tie the scores up. Well, say mind your work. Didn't want that cannon. No, no, he's got to play a, play a bit of a shot. You can just clip this one back to the top. Just about judging that cue ball. He's gone too far for what he planned, but he knew he had a, a backup plan. Extension call. Pop made and now he's back in position. We've got a very interesting finish this first match coming up. About three minutes left to play, all square. Christoph Lambert gets the job done. All right, we're 2 2. Time for one more frame for sure. Maybe two. Don't rule out the draw at this stage, though. And if this frame comes out horrible, we might not even get one more frame. It's at that point in the match where it is very, very delicately poised. Yeah, one thing for sure, though, Christoph wants to find a ball off his break. He has not managed to so far in the match. He sensed that he knows it. Yeah, you just wonder if you'll see a little bit closer to max power. He's sort of levelling up every break he's hit so far. Meticulous once again with that position of the cue ball. It's almost like a, almost like Cristiano Ronaldo taking a free kick, isn't it? Yeah. Every, everything is very deliberate in the way that he approaches it. And he hits it about as hard as well. Oh, that'll do. Has he got a first shot? Well, he's got a red. Does he have a yellow? I think he wants reds anyway, to be honest. The only red that's slightly awkward at first glance is the one that's going to be nearest the eight ball. And he could get on it straight away. Yeah, this is, this is as good as it gets, really, to go into the lead. Just wonder how Christoph wants to take it. There's no consideration, I don't think. There might be now, because you just had a little look at the scoreboard, which does have the match and the shot clock on it. Just wonder if he's now going to try and take a little bit more time out of the match. He won't be able to finish the match, but make Luke produce a really quick clearance. Yeah, put the pressure on. See, first things first, make sure of the clearance, but should just about have done that now. Well, he used his extension there and still had a good 14, 13 seconds left of it, so there's not too much consideration on it. 
I say he should have done. He could go awkward here on his last positional shot. The one he's nearest to, he'd love to have got rid of this one two or three shots ago, but he didn't land on the angle he wanted to. But he controlled that well. But is he just about straight enough on it? Yeah, I think so. So he can just drop it in. Yeah, he is. He's coming around just to check. I was a, bit, a little bit worried he might have to float it round the bottom of the table and back out, but he's okay. So Luke Sanchez is going to have about 70 seconds to produce a break and run to square the match up. Christoph goes into the lead and we are 68 seconds remaining. Luke Sanchez has got just that to try and salvage a point from his first match of the night. It sums up professional ball and an ultimate ball, really. Luke makes mistakes in his first frame, gets away with it. Mistakes in the second frame, gets punished, and then makes the clearance off the break, and you think, OK, he's settled into this match, and he hasn't had to uh, touch the table since. He's dry breaks all he's done. So he's gone from winning to losing, and probably thought, OK, I'm up and running now. Well, first things first, before we think about getting the clearance away, in about a minute, he's got to make a ball off the break. It's a similarly meticulous approach, if a little less exaggerated for Luke. It's another good hit. And it's not dry. So then, you got a minute, Luke. Get to work. Yeah, I think the reds are good here. Reds are good. He's, he's eyeing up. This is a very tricky pot in the middle. It looks easy on the screen. Very, very easy to miss this one. That's a good camera angle to show it. Yeah, he didn't try and do too much there. It was just make sure of the pot. And now, I know it's only 37 seconds, but he'll feel like he should get these. the yellow it's okay he can go cushion first yeah that'll do how would you like this for your eight ball final 10 seconds of the match nails it and look what it means to Luke Sanchez what a shot that is three seconds left in the match it's not done just yet Luke back in your chair says Scott Price because there may yet be a little bit more drama. There's three seconds left in the match, which means Christophe Lambert with a golden break could win it. Golden Duck could also lose it, but you can see the last break from Christophe. Got that eight ball moving towards that centre pocket. Yeah, I'd love to get that going the same way again. But how good was that from Luke Sanji's? Brilliant. That, that eight ball was something very, very special. And so much so, he, he punches the floor and he, thoughts, he thinks the match is over. But he's got to wait and sit there. This will be torture for him right now. All eyes on that eight ball. And he's changed his break. He has. Christos going cut break. Or is he? Just moved the cue ball. I think it might still be top ball. All eyes on the eight either way. And it stays absolutely stationary. Match done. Brilliant match as well. Thoroughly enjoyed that one. It finishes at three apiece and there is plenty to play for. But what a clutch clearance from Luke Sanchez to round out that match. Awesome stuff.